Scientists predict that pollen counts will quadruple over the next 20 to 30 years, making life unbearable for those with pollen sensitivities. They say people who don't normally suffer from hay fever may likely start to. Asthma attacks may also increase. Professor Johnny Peter, head of the allergy unit at UCT's Lung Institute, responsible for monitoring pollen in South Africa, joins us now via Skype. Professor, a very, very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's first start with how pollen is monitored or counted? So the way to monitor pollen is actually quite challenging in the sense that you have to put a device onto the roof around seven to 10 meters. This device um, consists of a sort of drum with a wind vane. And basically the air is sucked into this and inside the drum is a small turning wheel with almost like a sticky tape on it. And it turns over the course of a week. And what we can do then is by taking the strip or the sticky tape, mm. looking at it under the microscope, we can identify which pollen grains are in the air. And also we can use some mathematics uh, with the airflow to calculate the amount of pollen in the air. So by putting these in different places, we can then calculate uh, when pollen is rising and which pollens are prominent at that time. So what are the findings now? Are the current levels abnormal and how many uh, grains of pollen are there typically? So we are just now at the start of spring um, and so we are seeing levels rising, particularly tree pollen at the moment. That's what we're starting to pick up in um, our traps in Johannesburg, uh, Pretoria, Bloemfontein and Cape Town. Um, some of the coastal areas are still uh, coming, and, and that's sort of to be predicted. Um, but what's, what's kind of alarming is this year in the Northern Hemisphere, we had record high levels. And then um, where we started to increasingly worry about this is even in the Southern Hemisphere. So in 2016, we had in Australia, there was a combination of very high levels of pollen and a freak thunderstorm that led to um, about 3,000 asthma admissions and about 10 asthma deaths in 24 hours. So what we are being, the reason that we are kind of really bringing this to the public's attention is so that we can start to monitor in South Africa to know what's actually going on here. And so, and, and in, in the Cape, we've been managing to do this for about 20 years. And to this, to this effect, last year, after the droughts in the Cape, we saw a 10-year high of pollen, where in October we saw very high grass and tree levels. So this is why we think that it's an important issue that over the next uh, 20 years with climate change will become an increasingly more worrisome problem. And if we don't get the resources and make the effort to monitor, we will not be able to predict this for our South African public. Okay, so you spoke about Cape Town, and I see that the level of grass pollen there has grown something like fourfold. What does this actually mean? What is the effect of this? So, I mean, in, in reality, about we estimate that about 30% of South Africans suffer with what we call allergic rhinitis, and lay people will know this as hay fever. And a proportion of them suffer with asthma. So... Um, pollen allergies, this would be grasses, trees, or weeds, different, different allergenic pollens, they are responsible for triggering these symptoms. So what our concern is, is that if these levels increase year on year, we will see more uh, asthma attacks, we will see more people suffering. Uh, and that's the real issue. Mm. And who's more susceptible to, you know, pollen uh, allergies or just irritations as a result of pollen? So what we see is, is that there are sort of genetically individuals and we call them atopic individuals. And those atopic individuals are tend to be the p people that are more allergic. And they often have a combination of say allergic rhinitis, um, asthma, and sometimes eczema. So those are the kind of conditions that group together and and even sometimes in children, we see quite a few food allergies. So those are the group that are at higher risk. But one of the things that we're looking to do as well is get the knowledge out there to the public so that people that aren't, that don't know that they're allergic will make the connection because they'll hear, 
oh, okay, tree pollen is high at the moment or grass pollen. And you know what? My eyes are really going crazy, my itching. Um, I've had an asthma attack recently. And with that, that will help people to prompt them to seek diagnosis. Because with diagnosis, we definitely have ways of treating uh, allergic rhinitis. We have good treatments for asthma that can prevent uh, exacerbations or problems developing. And specifically for pollen allergies as well, we actually can even offer immune therapy to people, which over time can potentially cure them. Mm. So there's a lot that can be done if people make the connection and seek an appropriate diagnosis. So what's, what have been your findings on the impact of uh, pollen allergies, especially on the public health system? So, well, we don't, that's one of the problems is that we actually don't know what the story is nationally. So that's why we have made a huge effort uh, this year to set up the traps in uh, six of the provinces that we've so far managed. And that's been done through our corporate sponsors. We've had Clix, Thermo Fisher, um, A Vogel, Ekinoforce, and Twin Savers very kindly come on board to help us do this. But we're still missing other provinces. And the truth is, we won't really be able to know the full impact of this on the South African public unless we can continue this work and expand it into all the provinces. Like, for instance, Northwest, Pumalanga, Limpopo, we don't have traps there monitoring. So, so that's actually what we're trying to do. So the answer is I'd love to be able to tell you what, with more accuracy what the situation is in South Africa, but this is the first year in 20 years that we've managed to even set up the traps for the last few weeks. Just a final question, Professor. Have you done any study on the impact of air pollutants, especially on the structure of the biological structure of pollen grains? That's a very good question, actually. Um, we personally haven't done the research, but there is currently a lot of research done on this because air quality is thought in, you know, in the WHO predictions of impacts on health on respiratory diseases to be one of the major problems in the future. And what they have found is that air pollution can in fact worsen pollen allergy and pollen sensitivity. So there is a synergistic negative impact of the two. So that is another factor to consider, especially uh, in areas of the world where pollution is growing. Thank you so much for chatting to us, Professor Johnny Peter, sharing your insights, head of Allergy Unit at UCT's Lung Institute, responsible for monitoring pollen Thank in South much. Africa. Concerns over tax.